I recently had an interesting video response to one of my videos in the How to Argue with a Creationist series that I think you'll enjoy. His name is Yedrow, or at least that's how I imagine that it's pronounced. When I first saw his name, I was like, does his name mean Young Earth Drow? I never knew Dark Elves were into creationism. I'm sure a lot of people didn't understand that joke, but if you did, please have many children, and have them with me if it's biologically possible. Anyway, Yedra was apparently already exerting a lot of influence on the atheists of YouTube, because just a few days after I saw this video, the amazing atheist began to adopt his style. Let's see what sage wisdom he has to impart to the Crocodile Army, shall we? This video here of a huge straw man that the guy is knocking down, he's going to find the weakest creation of the documents, and knocking them down, and he's selling you a bag of goods, saying that this is what you're going to find if you to debate it at a creationist, whatever a creationist is. I believe that the world was created. Am I a creationist? Well, there are a lot of the things that the so-called creationists believe that I don't agree with, so where does that where does that leave everyone? Okay, on the straw man part, Yedrow, these are all arguments I've actually heard before that I talk about in this series, and some of them were made directly to me. That's not a straw man. At worst, it's a generalization. If you're some special kind of creationist that wouldn't make those exact dopey arguments, then fine. Let's see what you have to say. Oh, and by the way, in terms of most discussions on evolution and creationism, you're generally considered a creationist if you believe species on Earth were magically created by a deity and did not evolve through Darwinian evolution. Evolution really has nothing to do with whether God exists or not, of course. Species evolve from other species, and you can either change your beliefs to fit reality, as many branches of Christianity and other religions already have done, or you can deny reality to suit your religion. I would guess that you've made your choice already. He makes a point about measurement. Measurement is an interesting thing. Like, the point he makes about measurement in a very flat, literal sense isn't true. It's just not true, because nothing maintains the same shape as it passes through time and space. Matter doesn't behave the way he's, he's presenting it. Matter is stretchy, and it moves around, especially when you get into a quantum world. So he, uh, he's, he's not right there. Your argument about measurement is a valiant attempt at making everything seem fuzzy and mystical. Religion lives in fuzziness. Let's get specific. You're talking about changing states of matter and differences in types of measurement. Sure, matter is stretchy, but if you have a block of ice and it melts into water, or you boil it into gas, repeating the same process leads to predictable results, no matter what the measurement is. Matter doesn't just decide to be different, so your argument doesn't help creationism at all. Evolution is generally within the science of biology, with some chemistry too. Quantum physics isn't going to refute the fossil or DNA evidence, or make it disappear, and that's what you need to start with to prove it wrong. He goes into people criticizing documents, and he leaves out the only meaningful criticism. He, he builds some straw men with some garbage about, about uh, da Darwin marrying his cousin, but he leaves out the fact that, that Darwin uh, may well have been a racist, if not wasn't flat out a racist. Darwin didn't just write one book. He, he, he wrote other stuff. And from Darwin's arguments, we get the codified, the, the hard racism of the, of the 18th of the, or the 19th and 20th centuries. That's, that's Darwin. Darwin justified the presumptions that some human beings are more evolved than other human beings. Practically everybody back then was racist, or was at least widely seen as socially acceptable, and nearly everybody believed in God, too. I don't know that Darwin was a racist at all, but that was my whole point there, that it doesn't matter what Darwin was, or who used evolution to justify what kind of politics or view on humanity. His work was on the origin of species, a theory that ended up being the correct one against other popular theories of the day, including biblical creationism, so attacking his character is completely irrelevant. You not only entirely missed the point here, but you also completely reinforced my point that creationists love to make fuzzy arguments rather than argue the actual science of it. Then ironically, when we go digging up bones looking for ape men, we don't go to Europe where everybody's evolved, we go to Africa. That's where we go looking. Is that where they start? I don't see any reason to assume that that's where they started, and to the exclusion of, of the uh, Pacific Rim. Why don't we look in Africa for the earliest fossils? Well, it may have something to do with our closest genetic relatives, chimpanzees, still living in Africa. You can also find lots of early humanoid fossils in lots of different places, and some basic Google searches will give you plenty of information on exactly what has been found where. If you want to pick up a shovel and start digging behind your local Walmart, then by all means go to it. 
but I think we both know you won't find anything other than Hopa Sapiens there, and hopefully not even too many of them. Based on everything we know about humanity today, the change that led to a larger, more sophisticated brain happened before the races of Homo sapiens began to diverge. So anyone with a basic knowledge of early man would know that there's nothing in our history that would justify racism on that or any other basis anyway. Which you should already know if you understand the subject. I think that this is a continuation of that inbreeding racism in atheism, that intellectual inbreeding, that has come down from Dawkins. That it just says that because one thing looks like another, it is another. It's fallacious reasoning, or it's at least it's interlaced with fallacious reasoning. But he leaves that out. Uh, and if, if you want to come argue with, argue against me with what he's saying, then you just better leave your bag at home because I'll take you out, man. I'll take you to lunch. Wait, you think we think things are related to each other just because they look like each other? Uh, who's using the straw man here? You're going to need to do some more reading on the subject before you debate me. The fact that you clearly don't know much about a topic would give me pause if I were you, but I know that doesn't stop you or most other creationists from having a great deal of certainty on the matter. Oh, and on an unrelated topic, we had a little discussion about gay people in the comments section of a video you made, and you said something about them being detrimental to community health. Even if their behavior was as dangerous as smoking, which of course it's not with protection, just like heterosexual sex, that wouldn't determine whether it was moral or not. Furthermore, in order to be a community health issue that would be a personal threat to your health, you would need to be exposed to a pretty significant amount of someone's bodily fluids. And if you're facing such exposure, well... Let's just say you're probably standing a lot closer to people having gay sex than you'd need to be.